Hello, welcome to Garden of Wisdom channel. I hope you enjoy. Please click subscribe for more updates. Our subject today is We didn't choose to be born. We didn't choose our bodies. We didn't choose our qualities and defects. We didn't choose our parents and we didn't choose the system in which we live. We also didn't choose the time and space in which we were born. The same happened with our brothers and sisters, friends, parents, and so on. Since we were born that we started to create an identity and adapt to the mindset of our society through tradition, education, and later, through all forms of influence and manipulation as television, social media, and internet in general. Therefore, since the beginning of our lives that we are told what is good and what is bad, what is true and what is not, we were taught how and what to think, how to behave, and so on. We get to learn how to judge ourselves, and how to judge others. We learn the ugly, the beautiful, the fat and skinny, the black and white, the rich and poor, etc. As an effect, we apply these judgments on ourselves, the others, and everything else that is. From all these conditions we start creating an identity which becomes then, our concept of I. This I, plus the idea of our physical image, created by ourselves or imposed by others, creates the ego, our personal ego. This, of course it's a complex and long process of psychological and physical factors which are not to be recalled in this video. The video is rather driving into a consciousness direction. It is important to understand that our identity it is not who or what we truly are. We cannot create an identity and believe that we are it, because, before we created our own identity we were already. We are, simply and unconditionally. The whole process of the construction of our identity it happened from outside concepts which were forced to be accepted. During its creation, at any point there was space and time to stop and think by ourselves, to listen and observe our inside nature and learn from the pure self, as we were constantly influenced from outside impulses. We were always based on what was already there. We always followed that which was ready to consume and adapt to. In this way, for the most of us, there was never an opportunity to get to know the inner self, so we never knew who we truly are. The I which we created is all about a combination of concepts, ideas, and judgments of ourselves and all the past experiences and accumulated knowledge. It is totally wrong to regard oneself as what one knows or one thinks. We can say that it is from the ego that all problems and illusions arise. One can suffer with the idea of oneself which is completely nonsense because he created it himself. One can suffer from comparison with others when one is not happy with the idea with oneself and therefore, one will always try to be better and to have more. One is forced to satisfy the ego in order to be happy but sooner or later the ego will reveal its infinite cycle of needs. In modern life one loses itself in materialistic endeavors to feed and satisfy the ego. One is constantly blind and lost when follows it, and it will always be like this until it will wake up from the illusion. The nature of the ego is vast and complex, but for now it's enough to understand how ego arises and takes possession and control of the self. There is deep within us a source of pure consciousness that keeps calling for our attention to wake up from the illusion. One can call it intuition, light, the divine sparkle or whatever one can imagine. This consciousness is saying that there is much more beyond the physical forms of life. This light makes us question ourselves, the world in which we live, the system, the universe, etc. It makes us be aware of the sunrise and of the touch of a hand or a kiss. This consciousness is formless and timeless and it doesn't belong to us, rather be said that we belong to it, or we are one with it. This consciousness is what keeps us alive. It all happens by itself, under the power of a higher force. There isn't any identity on the self. There is again, the ego's illusion that we are our own body, mind, and soul, or feelings, thoughts and emotions. The identity is the bondage. This is the limit of the human condition because the extraordinary happens beyond the ego's reality. 
If you identify yourself with the ego, then the mind will act according to it and all the thoughts will arise from this same state of mind. If you want to control your thoughts, you first have to realize where they come from and to whom they arise. Your present life will rather be a product of the same condition. The mind can change its state so when you understood the illusion of the ego and all its concepts, and you no longer identify with it, the mind then will change into a different state, starting to act according to it. So therefore, to drop the ego is to shift one's mind to a higher state of consciousness, where you live as the pure self, beyond all the illusions of materialistic and egotistic mind, stuck in the matrix and living a lie. It is urgent to understand the ego's nature. All problem in the present world arise from the ego. Humans fight for more and better under the power of the ego, their own identity and its importance. The human became aggressive and competitive with himself and its own race. The human is no longer aware of its own condition and where it is leading. It creates problems and then finds solutions, and in applying solutions creates more problems. It lives in war, with himself and his own race and family. The human is in trouble because he doesn't know himself. He is lost and away from the reality, 